oil seepage, rusty pipelines and lack of quality water have exposed residents of a Lagos community to health hazards. And sadly, 12 years after senior correspondent Ade Doja Salam Adini reported the case, the story in Barua remains the same. This is Barua, a satellite town located in Ipaja, a Limosho local government area of Lagos State. Eighty-eight-year-old Khalid Barua did not waste time as he led us straight to one of the water tanks provided for the community by the NNPC as a relief, but it never functioned. This is a story of a community that is sitting on a time bomb. Illegal activities of bunkers and pipeline vandals reign supreme. Aside pipeline vandalism, the community also battles environmental pollution caused by fuel that has affected their water. The source of the contamination of the groundwater is the oil seepage from a ruptured NNPC pipeline, which is unfixed. The vandals they usually come to that area to come and vandalize this thing. In several occasions, I alerted the government, they do what they can do, but I still yet. Last year, December 24, they, 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 they didn't see it. We are so fortunate, it caught it cost fire, but we thank God we don't have any casualty in our community. We want the government federal government or NMBC to come and compensate us for all what we have spent. Many of us, all our life land earnings, we have spent it on water. The only obligation we are expecting from Lagos State Government is pipeborne water. Now that the Adinia water was have been tested and uh, they have been test run and we feel it is getting ready, so please, Mr. Governor, supply us, give us the water in Barua, relieve us from these 20 something years of pains and sufferings. Seeing young men move around with gallons of water in wheelbarrows called trucks is a norm here. In this house, Premium motor spirits that can start a vehicle was discovered from a well in 2010. The appearance and smell of this well water are signs telling that it has huge petroleum content. Residents of this community are therefore calling on the relevant government agencies concerned to hasten their promise in making this problem a thing of the past. Good morning. I am curious to know the state of things now. This is the particular spot where a bucket of refined PMS was drawn from a well when I visited years back. The well has since been closed and a borehole sunk at the same spot. But residents are saying it is still not drinkable. <laughs> I only used to wash clothes and then wash some dishes, but I don't use to bait because if I used to bait, it reacts on my body. No light, no water from the boreholes. I've been calling you since morning, you didn't come. Rashida's Latif has a family of eight. She buys four trucks of water daily. That is 40 gallons of water. This is the impact of the contaminated borehole in a bathroom. 
She told me how she spent a lot buying from water vendors. It hasn't been easy for us because we have been suffering for buying water up and down. Because the water we are using here is not good at all. And it's really affecting us. We can't even bathe with the water. We can't cook with it. We can't use it for cleaning. If I said that I should count the amount of the water I've been buying since almost 20 years now, it is uncountable. We go through the highway to the network of roads without proper drainage system to get to Karim Street where water vendors get their water. This is the only place where the borehole water is safe to drink in Barua. Residents and vendors buy at 10 naira per bucket and keg, while the water vendors sell at 500 naira per 10 gallons. Very drinkable. The Roman barbarians, even to go into their Sundays, I went to the church in the Roman port. They were my fool, not my jazzing damigo. This well is about 200 meters deep. It is pure petrol. After the water is put right like this, and so the floor like this, after some time, okay. the water, uh, the, the petrol will it float. It float up. It will float up, and the water will be down. Well, just like this, all wells dug in this community are all contaminated, more than 300 of them. Due to the contamination, residents suffer different health implications traced to the source of water that contains petroleum hydrocarbons. Dibale says though he is aging, he revealed that his eyes wasn't like this and that we saw in the 2010 interview with him. I have a body skin, a bone, bone skin, before it comes to normal. The water is affecting eyes. At the earlier stage, they said this water is toxic and it's smelly. It's affecting everybody's eyes. It's killing everybody gradually. We still see some of our people drinking it, but well, we don't know. I don't know what the outcome will be. When you hear of cancer today, when you hear of this tomorrow and so on and so forth, it's as a result of this thing. Then we decided to dare the odds to visit the spot where the NNPC pipelines ruptured and vandals operate. We traveled through the dangerous pipeline area. Our bus had to stop here. While we continued the rest of the journey on foot, our tour guide requested the protection of his identity to avoid being recognized by vandals, especially their informants. But line he go go straight down by. Only petrol. I'm okay, petrol. As part of measures to prevent fire outbreak in this area, some structures have been brought down to maintain a distance from the NNPC pipeline, and for more than ten years now, pipes here are still exposed. From here, everyone was dripped with fear. Nobody wants to take us to the place. Not even a tour guide anymore. They say it's a no-go area. Far away there. After much persuasion, a tour guide agreed. It's a long trek. The site looks possible as we gathered the Nigerian National Petroleum Company had just cleared the surrounding bushes of the pipeline. Our confidence and courage rose when we saw houses near the bush. Abandoned holes used in scooping fuel by vandals littered the way. It is obvious they are still indulged in this economic sabotage. This is the marshy area where oil pipeline vandals have been operating in Barua community for the past 28 years, unabated and creating fear for residents. Soon after, a tour guide alerted us and insists we leave quickly. We raised out. 
Despite repeated promises by the pipeline and product marketing company PPMC and other government agencies, oil pipeline in the area have remained broken and obsolete. When we visited the PPMC office at Ikoya Avenue, Ikoyi, Lagos, we were referred to Abuja. A top official of the PPMC in Abuja promised to look into the issue and get back to the community. Since the community lacked water, we took a trip to the Lagos State Water Corporation that promised to assist them. Adion one is supply. But there has been some issues with equipment here and there. So the pressure is not going as far as it's supposed to go. The major problem we have being the population explosions, the aging infrastructures. But please give us a time with some weeks, not months. Um, we will make sure that we restore all the hope uh, back in that, uh, in that vicinity. It may not be 100%, but we will get there so that they will not need to be using this uh, this uh, borehole water. It's not good for your skin and it's not good, good for consumption. Before 1996 that the community discovered the contamination, Barua had existed for more than 50 years without this seepage. Until that help comes, residents would continue to live in fear of disaster. The leakage led to underground pollution and it is spreading. The health hazards remain enormous as the people continue to use contaminated water. But water vendors, water business would continue to boom at the expense of the helpless residents. Salam Adeni, TVC News, Lagos.